Hi, welcome to a new Basic for Android video. I'm going to be showing off a new library that I found on the Basic for Android forums recently called Accelerated Surfaces. Uh, I've been keeping an eye out for libraries that may help with uh, game development using Basic for Android. There hasn't up till now been many libraries that would en enable you to do this without a very good grasp of OpenGL and basically writing your own OpenGL engine, in which case you'd be better off learning Java uh, using Eclipse and using one of the Android game engines available through right, using Java. Uh, however, there have started to be some developments. I showed you a little while ago now um, some videos using the GameView library uh, through Basic for Android, which is one of the first libraries. This library, however, is using OpenGL in the background, so taking some of the work off of you. If I just show you some of the examples, uh, I have an emulator already running. One quick example I'll show you just to prove that it is actually doing this kind of OpenGL work. Uh, OpenGL will basically treats bitmaps like textures and then you can then move that texture around uh, like an image effect. So if I drag around on this image you'll see that I'm actually causing a warping effect there. And if I open the um, code for this, there's a lot of samples included with it you'll see that there isn't actually that much code to it. It basically just splats the image over a grid and then moves the points around on the grid, stretching the image uh, over those points as you move them. And if I show you another couple of examples, you'll see why I'm quite excited about this library. If I go into Princess Tiles here, this won't work very well on the emulator because it's designed for a phone uh, or a tablet and then for you to then tilt the phone to control the character. So you can see the character there on the top of the um, screen just moving across and we can also zo zoom out, zoom in. It may not show very well on the video on YouTube but it does actually zoom in and out quite smoothly um, quick enough for you to probably use it some real time in the game as well. Um, so that's just showing you could write a 2D top-down scrolling game quite easily with this. And then if I open another example, I'll just restart the emulator. I've made the mistake of closing it there. Just while I'm waiting for that to restart, I'll just open up some more of the source code on this. So the next example I'm going to show you is actually a an example to show you just how many objects it can deal with at once. I was quite impressed with this actually. So this is an example called Flakes which is basically the Android image um, shown hundreds of times all falling down the screen like snowflakes hence it being called Flakes. It will try and run this up to 60 frames per second. You see there's a timer here set to 16 milliseconds um, which equates to 60 frames per second um, at the maximum. Now if the emulator is back up and running, which it almost is, I can show you this running. It gives us the option in this demo as well to select a different number of images uh, so you can get a feel for how fast your emulator on your PC runs um, and also how fast it will run on a phone. So obviously it's best to use your own Android phone or tablet for development and preferably you want your game, if you're writing a game, to run as smoothly as possible on your own device so that it will also run smoothly on lower down devices that aren't quite as powerful. So if I just restart this, I have this already installed, so if I just start up the program here. So this is running with a hundred objects. On the video on YouTube that you're watching now uh, it won't look that smooth, but you can see there is a frames per second counter on the screen, uh, which is currently up to 40 frames per second. Uh, I find this to be a little bit slower than my, say, my Galaxy S2 phone, which would normally be running this about 50, 50 frames per second. So if we increase the number of objects, say, to 150, you see it's quite quick there to generate more objects, and we're still running at 30 frames per second, which is actually perfectly fine for a game. So obviously there isn't all the game logic going on in the background here, it's just drawing images and rotating them. But here you've got real-time rotation, you've got no clipping, or proper clipping I should say, around the image, so they're not just rectangles, these are actual sprites. And looking at this, uh, you can quite easily see that you could quite easily write a game 
using this library. Um, you'd have to write some of the other code yourself, like collision detection, and then obviously you've got to use the sound library and get some control in there. But you can see that it does actually run very smoothly. I don't think there's any ex other examples on there uh, that I was going to show you. No. Uh, there is a game called Space Enemies, which is a basic Space Invaders game, but it's not really worth showing that on here now because, again, it runs in landscape mode, so it doesn't really work very well on the emulator. Um, I think there is a way to make the emulator run in landscape mode, but I've not found that on my system yet. I'll look it up later, maybe. Um, but for now, I've put a link to the library in the description for this video. And remember to check out Basic for Android at basicforandroid.com and that's for the number four and you can also access more details on my videos and other information from me at easyandroidcoding.com as well as getting a discount when you actually buy basic for android okay i'll see you later and hopefully it won't be so long before my next video